I feel that it is time for some of the heirs that are being presented in modern Wesleyan scholarship to be presented publicly so that people will have to deal with these things rather than just make rash decisions about crucial, important doctrinal points. One of them is the rapture of the church. John Wesley was an avid believer in a pre-tribulation, pre-millennial viewpoint. Um, but today, modern scholarship has changed his emphasis. If you look at his earliest biographer, uh, Luke Tyreman, he was the first one to advocate what John Wesley taught, and he believed that John Wesley taught a pre-millennial viewpoint, which is accurate. Uh, it wasn't until 50 years later within Methodism that you find somebody changing uh, Wesley's viewpoint over to a post-millennial view. Well, if you look in John Wesley's notes, it brings up a major problem for those of you who have heard and believe that John Wesley was a, a millennialist because of his upbringing in the Church of England and that he changed that position when he came to his conversion in 1738 and then he became a post-millennialist. Well, if you have heard that viewpoint, I raise this one question to you. Why did he name a date that Christ would return close to his own end of his life in 1791? He believed Christ was going to come in 1836. You can see this here in his New Testament notes. You can see that this, the passage emphasizes that date. You can see that he named it. And so this is really a problem for those of you who think that he was a person who believed that the coming was going to happen after a thousand years. And um, one of the other things that I have to raise is that point, that he actually said in his Old Testament notes, which is written later in his life, that he confirmed there was going to be a thousand year reign on this earth of Christ. And he also tells you in his New Testament notes that his coming was going to be before the thousand years. So you can see that Wesley was clearly a premillennialist.